Hello everyone. Welcome back to Bootstrap Workbench. Today I wanted to talk about a uh, ham radio related topic uh, called uh, ionograms and uh, ionosons. Uh, basically what you're looking at here on the screen is a, uh, an ionogram uh, collected by the, uh, the ionos ionosons at uh, Eglin Air Force Base and uh, Austin, Texas. So the way that you read an ionogram is that uh, you see that there is uh, red and green lines and then an additional phantom pair in this case. Uh, so, sorry about that. What you end up with is uh, the ionosond is an HF transmitter and receiver that uh, is capable of transmitting a signal that uh, increases or decreases in frequency and uh, a receiver that listens for a reflection from the ionosphere. And uh, so in this case, where the red line starts is the, uh, the lowest frequency that uh, the ionogram, sorry, the ionosond is detecting a reflection. And then you move across in a fairly linear fashion with a slight increase until you reach a point where uh, it starts to take off in a vertical fashion. And what that means is you've reached the critical frequency of the um, F2 layer, in this case, uh, of the ionosphere, and that the uh, signals are no longer reflect refracting, but they are uh, going straight through the ionosphere, and so there's not a sufficient return. Uh, critical frequency is very important in case you're using an INVIS or a near vertical incident skywave antenna uh, since you're wanting a reflection pretty much directly back down. Uh, some cases that would be known as a, a cloud warmer antenna. Uh, what that allows you to do if you have an antenna that's too low to have a good launch angle, uh, you can use it for uh, local or uh, regional uh, connectivity. Uh, this is pretty frequent for uh, 75 and 80 meter bands. So uh, in this case, if we look uh, over here at the side, we can see that the current uh, critical frequency for the F2 layer is 4.050 megahertz, and that the uh, maximum usable frequency is 12.71. And uh, right now it is almost midnight uh, central time, so that is uh, probably about right. Another way to look at this plot is uh, on region6armymars.org, and I'll put a link to the uh, solar weather section uh, in the video description. Uh, there's a uh, trend plot that uh, shows you uh, information uh, about the current uh, critical frequency for the F2 layer. Now, on this particular plot, blue is today, and uh, where it ends at is uh, the current time. The uh, red plot is yesterday's uh, critical frequency for F2 trend, and then the green plots are the previous five days. And so you can see that uh, it's pretty um, stable about how it does things and uh, times are in UTC and then the uh, the left scale is in uh, frequency in megahertz so you can see that around 9 930 uh, the ionization levels in the uh, ionosphere fall to the point where uh, uh, the critical frequency falls below 3 megahertz and when that happens uh, 7580 meter is either going to just basically uh, drop out and kind of go dead, or the band will go really long, and uh, you'll hear signals from further away than you normally hear them from, but you won't hear signals that are close in. Uh, and then it many times recovers to a point where the uh, the critical frequency uh, goes back to about 4 megahertz, which is what it did tonight. And so once it came back to about 4 megahertz, then... Uh, communications can be sustained uh, semi-reliably in the 75-80 megahertz or 75-80 meter band uh, until uh, local sunrise which recently has been around 6 30 6 45 
that's when you'll start to see gray line propagation on 40 meter band. And then after that, the ionization levels rise to the point where the uh, critical frequency rises to around 7 megahertz, which is the 40, meg 40 meter band. And uh, the MUF uh, is almost always about three times what the critical frequency for the F2 layer is. And so you'll frequently, frequently see the, uh, the MUF above 14 megahertz. Uh, which is a 20 meter band, and so uh, reliable communications can be sustained there. Uh, of course, we're in the low point of the solar cycle right now, and so uh, this is the, the way that we're seeing things now. Once the solar cycle starts to come back around, uh, we'll see the MUF rise back into the uh, 26 to 28 megahertz range, uh, and the uh, you'll be able to sustain worldwide uh, communication on the, the higher bands, uh, including sometimes the 10 meter band. So uh, that's a basic breakdown of uh, how this works and how to read the information. Uh, there are a number of these uh, ionosomes around the world. Uh, I happen to use this site because this is the data that's for my region. Uh, you may have to look around and find the data for your region. Um, also, I was uh, going to mention that uh, the phantom plots here, that is the second reflection. So the lower plots are the first reflection where the transmitter sends the information, it's refle reflected back from the ionosphere, and it's received uh, by an ionosoned uh, receiver. The phantoms are going to be that uh, the radio wave went up to the ionosphere, bounced back down to the Earth, reflected off of the Earth, went back up to the ionosphere, and was reflected back to the Earth again. And in some cases, if there's particularly good uh, return, you'll see multiple bounces, like in the case of uh, this plot, uh, which is rather compressed. Let's see here. You can see some phantom plots in this uh, ionogram. Yeah, that's it for that. So that's that's a basic breakdown. Uh, and this is a short intro. There is a lot of information on the internet uh, about how to read ionograms. Uh, much of it is pretty dry. But uh, this gives you the basics to be able to see what your critical frequency is for the F2 layer, to be able to figure out what your MUF is, and uh, to see where propagation is occurring and uh, in what frequency ranges. So that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, put them in the uh, section down below. And uh, I hope that you found this video informative, and uh, I also hope that you have a great day. Thanks for watching.